Hi, I'm Tyler. Hi, Tyler. And I have a puzzle game addiction. When done right, puzzle solving is insanely gratifying. Nothing else compares to thinking through a problem, being stuck for so long, and suddenly going, I got it. I think I know the answer, and immediately being rewarded. Ah, I'm a genius. That was so clever. It's better than crack. But this isn't just about the hard stuff. The puzzle game genre is entering a golden age of creativity and innovation. This is by far the best time to get into puzzle games, and no matter your skill level, I want to find you something you love. Here are my top 10 puzzle games of 2023, ranked by the amount of happy chemicals they gave my brain. Puzzle solving may not guarantee happy chemicals. Do not partake in puzzle solving while operating heavy machinery. Side effects include headaches, sneezing, confusion, angry outbursts, cancer, and death. If puzzle solving goes on for longer than four hours, call a doctor. Have you ever yearned for nature to return to its former glory? If so, you'd love Terra Nil. No, this is not a reverse city builder, despite the game's marketing. This is a puzzle game because it plays like a puzzle game. It has handcrafted level design, rules you must mostly figure out yourself, and no replayability because a puzzle is meant to be fun exactly once. Here's how the game works. You're given a disgusting barren landscape, and you must figure out how to turn it into a thriving ecosystem. It's like cleaning your room, except better. You place a windmill on a rock to generate clean energy, you make the soil fertile, and then impregnate it with water to grow sweet, succulent grass. Uh, that's actually on the Steam page verbatim, definitely not my words. The earth is saved, and the brain is happy. But wait, there's more. You have to prepare for unexpected challenges and requirements, which is where the game really shines. Because you don't know what's coming next, the real difficulty is solving the current requirements in a way that prepares you for as many future challenges as possible. It actually mirrors how I solve problems in real life. Think of the worst possible outcome, then figure out how to overcome that before it even happens. It usually doesn't happen, and you feel kind of paranoid for doing it, but uh, when it works, it works. This game is packaged so well that you don't even realize you're expanding your problem-solving brain. All you can focus on is how good it feels to embrace the beating heart of nature. Climate change has been awfully silent since this game dropped. <laughs> what a little bit. Number nine, number nine, Number nine goes to a game that's known for raw puzzle pleasure. Magic Cube doesn't have a story, graphics, or even sex, oh, but it does have something better. Highly focused, carefully crafted puzzle design. When you put all of your focus on just one thing, that thing can achieve greatness. And Magic Cube's thing is creating as hard of puzzles as possible given extremely few moving parts and even fewer pixels. You might think that a level with four moving parts must be easy, but after playing the game, you magically stop thinking about that. You see, the mechanics seem very simple on the surface. You just kind of move around, shoot a box, push a box, push buttons. But the way everything kind of interacts has a lot of richness that's hidden beneath the surface. Because the levels are compact, you run out of obvious solutions really quickly, forcing you to find creative ways to manipulate your tiny object. It's small, hard, and only $3. Plus, they don't get mad when you pull it out at Walmart. My eighth place game might be the polar opposite of Magic Cube. Great graphics, heavy story, but easier puzzles. The fact that the Talos Principle 2 is only 8th place just goes to show how utterly stacked this year was for puzzle games. And listen, high for puzzle games like this are always super hype, but it is extremely hard for a game with a scope this wide to nail every aspect. The game clearly wants to appeal to as many people as possible, so every aspect is made extremely safe. The normal puzzles were consistent, they were fair and fun, most were even good, but none got me hard. Even though the puzzles were overall easy, I can still respect a lot of the design choices behind them. In particular, there were two things that they did really well to prevent people from getting frustrated. The first thing is having intuitive visual design. Every action has a clear and predictable outcome, and the mechanics are grounded in basic human understanding. The second thing they did is stretch the tutorial for new mechanics thinner than usual. You basically break down a concept into the smallest bites imaginable, and then give one bite per level, and have that be the only requirement for beating that level. But the downside is, sometimes the bite is so small that the puzzle just feels like busy work. Thankfully, the new mechanics felt less like busy work and kept the game fresh. But the flip side of it being fresh is that they didn't really take the chance to explore much depth to the mechanics. What's sad is that there were tons of opportunities for optional challenging puzzles that explore depth, but for those who want to wait who knows how long until the DLC comes out. There are optional puzzles, but they're not challenging puzzles that explore depth. They're instead crimes worse than murder. 
I think the story drops the ball as well, the central mystery isn't as engaging as the first games, and the philosophy deals a lot more of questions that have objectively correct answers, as opposed to the Talos Principle 1 that had a bit more subjectivity surrounding it. It was overall still fun, the normal puzzles were satisfying, and honestly, it's a great game to relax and turn your brain off to. It's just that relaxing and turning your brain off are not what I'd expect from a philosophical puzzle game. Number 7 is more upfront about its zen nature. Can't Live Without Electricity is a turn-based optimization puzzler where you connect varying colored houses to the electricity grid. Every turn, two new houses pop up and you gain additional resources. Wires are the main resource. This is what you use to connect the houses to the grid. You spend one wire to build along the grid and 1.5 wires to build diagonally. The other rule is that you have to make sure the different colors don't interact. Wait. You have to segregate the houses, but no. You cannot connect different colored houses with the same wire network. It has to be separate networks. This means that sometimes you have a beautifully organized network and the wrong colored house shows up at the worst moment, forcing you to redesign completely. This is where the game shines best, because unlike many motorways, there is no real penalty for redesigning. There's no timing aspect you have to worry about, redesigning and optimizing is the fun. Another benefit over many motorways is that this game does have a win state, which means you don't have to feel like a loser when you finish. The level variety is great. Easy levels, hard levels, square levels, hexagon levels, levels that look like cats, and tons more levels in the custom level editor. If you ever wanted a car wash for your brain, this is it. At number 6, Viewfinder has the coolest main mechanic out of any game released this year. You take a picture, your Polaroid camera prints it out, and you use perspective tricks to insert the contents of that photo into reality. There are no drawbacks, you have unlimited freedom with this, and it is so much fun. It almost feels like a sandbox puzzler, because the majority of the game focuses on letting you have fun with the mechanic instead of melting your brain, and it is so right for doing that. The novelty is so strong that even the easy levels are great fun, but we all know it's more fun when it's hard. Case in point being, this game's one really hard part, beating the ending sequence on the first try, is a ton of fun. It, that challenge stuck in my mind as the single greatest gaming moment out of the entirety of 2023. All this fun stuff, and I haven't even mentioned its other innovative mechanic. The ability to go into the game settings. I highly recommend you do that. Storyteller is one of those games that looks easy to make, but is so hard to get right. There are so many important tiny details that if you even got one of them wrong, the entire experience would be thrown off. And the storyteller experience is pure organic comedy mixed with puzzle solving. This is by far the funniest puzzle game I've ever seen. Every possible combination of panels with characters and different stories must make narrative sense. So no matter how stupid your story is, the characters will react to it. You want to write a story about cousins getting married? Go ahead, be my guest. You actually get an achievement for doing so. The current game is already a ton of fun, but it seems like this is a game that wants to keep getting updates. There's always more characters and story ideas to add, so why not? It already got a major update doubling its length, so I wouldn't be surprised if there's more to come. If you're here for a good time and not for a long time, Storyteller is the game for you. Who's ready for some emotional whiplash? Pacurette Down the Bun Burls appears cute and cuddly, but is not shy at all about its several layers of extreme meta puzzles. All you have to do is chase a bunny until it's trapped. How hard can it be? Just you wait and see. This is easily the hardest game on the list. So the enjoyment comes from the pure spectacle of how far beyond the boundaries of sanity this game is willing to go. It is greater than the sum of its parts. No individual puzzle will make you orgasm, but it may make a bunny do so. It will, however, give you blue balls because, warning, this game is not finished yet. Do not panic. I repeat, do not panic. This game is so hard that you'll likely tap out before reaching the point where the game point blank tells you, be patient, we're still developing it. But just in case you're as insane as me, you deserve the heads up. I reserve the right to change my rating if the ending sucks, but the rest of the game is so cool that I don't think it'll change much. The only blemish is the part like right before that dev message where you literally have to grind in a puzzle game, which I thought was not possible given the genre. So I'm huffing some hopium that the grind is only there to deter you from getting to that dev message, and when the final update comes, uh, it's possible the grind will be reduced. 
I mean, it's really easy. All they'd have to do is change a single five into a three and the grind is gone. So please, 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 please make that happen. For now, the only number three on my list goes to Chance of Sinar. This game has the most enchanting gameplay loop I've seen in a long time. You wander around the Tower of Battle, and you're presented with strange glyphs you don't know the meaning of. You must use context clues from people speaking, as well as the environment, to figure out what exactly they mean. It's a pattern recognition game disguised as a language game, and it is incredible at puzzle designing and basing. Each word you learn gives a healthy dopamine hit, and you learn a new one at the perfect rate to maintain a great high. The pacing puts this head and shoulders above other language translation games, and the parts where you apply your learned language to solve puzzles in the game's world shoots this to the moon. Unfortunately, this game isn't always good, but when it's good, it is earth-shattering. There simply wasn't enough bad stuff to let me forget about the sublime stuff. Speaking of bad stuff, I now want to do a segment where I talk about a few puzzle games that I didn't enjoy, but you might. Different people, different tastes, and the puzzle game genre has so much variety that these games might be more up your alley than the ones I do recommend. First, I have Cocoon. Cocoon is a puzzle adventure game from the designer of Limbo and Inside, and follows heavily in their atmospheric footsteps. Instead of a dark and hostile world, your environment is bright, but still creepy thanks to all of... these. There's also some really sick doors for all you door fans out there. The atmosphere is the game's focus, and the puzzles are mostly busy work to help lead you through the environment. The early puzzles are about figuring out the game's systems, and even though it dives into topics like worlds inside of worlds, everything's really intuitive. There's a few boss fights that at first seem like they'll require actual execution and reaction time, but it's actually more of a factor of figuring out how they work, and once you do so, you'll find that the timing is quite forgiving. The end game starts to flesh out the mechanics into more involved puzzles, but that's accompanied by extremely lengthy doubling back with a slow walking speed. Pretty much all the late puzzles suffer from the issue where it takes 20 seconds to figure out the solution, then two minutes to slowly walk back and forth in order to do the solution. What's extra painful is that there's so many spots where you could easily design the game better to spend less time doubling back, but they chose not to do so in favor of adding the playtime? It could be so the player is forced to appreciate the environment, but that would be stupid. If the player wants to enjoy the environment, they can just stop moving. Let the player decide when they want to take a break. Normalize breaks where you have to get up from your computer, walk around, and go to sleep. I don't like this gamification of the break process, it's kind of gross. However, if you enjoy atmospheric games with a puzzle tease more than me, you'll enjoy Cocoon. If you would prefer a game that takes the world inside a world into a more interesting direction, I would highly recommend Patrick's Parabox. And for a more engaging and mysterious environment, I would recommend Inside. Void Stranger is another puzzle game with too much busy work for me to get interested. This appears to be a game where the surface layer is really trivial, but as you progress through the game, the layers peel back, and you learn a ton of secrets, progress story, and so on. I don't know how cryptic or interesting the secrets get, because I only played for an hour, solved 55 puzzles, and didn't feel like I engaged my brain even once. Not even to open the chests. If a game like this wants to get me hooked, the base layer needs some meat on it. The main mechanic has potential, but none of the first 55 levels fleshed it out. Fans of being horny will love this game. If you like the idea of a puzzle game with several increasingly cryptic and interesting layers, I would highly recommend Tunic. If I was to make one of these videos for 2022, Tunic would have been my number one game. Mosalina is interesting as a concept because it hints towards a future with millions of randomly generated puzzles, but as of now, handcrafted puzzles still remain king. I solve puzzles for the Eureka moment, and intentional design still lends itself to stronger and more frequent surprises. Mosalina has Eureka moments, but they're sandwiched in between 20, oh it's this again moments, and 30, I think I got it, but I'll never know because I messed up the jump moments. If you miss a single jump in this game, you will never get to try the exact level ever again. So I would have to put this game as more of a platformer than a puzzle. And it's kind of a janky platformer, but if you do like jank in your platformers, then honestly, you'll enjoy it more than me. In its place, I would recommend, well, nothing. <laughs> because this game sets out what it wants to do extremely well. I just hate what it sets out to do. Uh, apologies if all that was too negative. I will never pretend to like something that I don't like. Go and check out the games yourself, form your own opinions, and never let someone not liking something stop you from liking it. Because in the end, that's all that matters. 
Now let's go to a segment called, Yes, Polybridge 3 is a puzzle game. And it's my second favorite puzzle game of 2023. This game has something for everyone. It teaches a wide range of engineering principles in ways that even young kids can understand. It has fun levels to solve that expand on those principles and asks you for creativity. It has a completely fair learning curve that starts out easy, but absolutely challenges you later on. And it provides you global leaderboards for you to master your craft and stake legitimate claim as the best bridge builder in the world. What it doesn't do is teach you how to add periods to your sentences. What the hell was I thinking? If you ever want a true world record in anything, Polybridge 3 is probably a great shot. One of my favorite gaming moments of this year was trying to get the cheapest budget on a bridge at the same time that another top bridge builder was going for the same thing. So we were racing to see who could get the lowest money in real time and it was thrilling. Organic moments in that don't show up in just any game. Polybridge 3 is special. If you've heard of Polybridge but didn't think you could get into it, Polybridge 3 is by far the best version to get started with. The physics are predictable and not jank, but when they are jank, it's hilarious. There are dozens of ways to beat every level, and sometimes the jank is the most fun. If only bridges in real life were this much fun. Now, the moment you've all been waiting for. My 2023 number one. Point five, game of the year. End Step Steve part two. I technically can't include this game in the list because it came out on December 23rd, 2022. But if you squint hard enough, it might look like it's a 2023 game. For this game, it would help to play End Step Steve part one first, which came out in 2020. And between the two games, there is some incredibly impressive puzzle design. This game has a simple premise. You can only move a small number of times, then you die. There is similarly a small number of mechanics. Steve, Flag, Rock, Belt, Ice Splitter, and now Portal. From these and these alone, this game invents so much depth out of thin air that even me telling you about this depth cannot adequately prepare you for what you're about to see. Every 30 minutes or so, you learn something new that changes your whole perspective on the game. If you like asking, wait, I could have done this the whole time? Then you'll love End Step Steve. Both parts one and two are free on the web and definitely worth your time. You might be wondering, what could possibly be better than a free web game with a simple premise and incredible depth? Not much, except for my number one puzzle game of 2023 and the best puzzle game I played in a long time, Can of Wormholes. This game came early in the year and I still think about it to this day. If you're only here for creative puzzles and you don't really need any bells and whistles, this is a must play. It has the most consistently high quality puzzles out of any game I think I've ever played, uh, previously surpassing a monster's expedition. The game has over 100 puzzles, none of them are duds, and over 75% of them are mega bangers. You constantly have to come up with creative and novel ideas. No two puzzles require the same trick. Every puzzle is fair and trustworthy. There's not a single moment where the game feels like BS. And as you play, you kind of notice a connection growing, growing between, between yourself, yourself and, and the, the developer, developer as you learn the subtle language of their puzzle design. Tons of lessons are hidden in plain sight, and every mechanic has so many consequences that you will never stop being surprised by their depth. Like Magic Cube, the levels are extremely efficient, only hosting a handful of objects, yet providing a satisfying challenge. Despite the challenge, don't let the game's difficulty scare you away. This is the first puzzle game with a hint system genius enough to help out struggling players without ruining the game for them. If you're stuck on a puzzle, instead of like, looking it up or using a normal hint, this game lets you gain insight, which transports you to an easy version of that puzzle, which teaches you the level's trick without spoiling the entire thing. You still get that satisfaction of solving the puzzle without the rage of being trapped for hours on something you accidentally overthought. I used gain insight exactly two times, and I'm glad I did both times. Ideally, you shouldn't use it as a crutch, but it is a much better last resort than any puzzle game has ever offered. A second to last resort I used was asking myself, what's the coolest possible solution this level could have? And it would very often be that solution. It's a puzzle game that truly wants the player to beat it, yet manages to provide a great challenge. The combination of those two is so exceedingly rare that I can't help but worship any game that pulls it off. Can of Wormhole sits on top of the throne for the most stacked year for puzzle games in a long time. So many games that I had a blast playing, and I hope you check them out. Share this video with your friends to help the puzzle game genre grow. I'll see y'all soon with the next exciting puzzle games of 2024. Hey, where'd everybody go?
Anyone want some crack?